right here what it is. We a lot of times we pray like this. God, I'm single. Lord, bring me my girlfriend. Bring me my wife. Lord, help me drive safe to Nacogdoches today. Lord, um, I have a pay I have this job interview I'm wanting. Lord, help me get this job. Right. Right. Those aren't innately bad prayers, but those are oftentimes are the only things we pray. So then because we're praying the wrong way, we are then, if you don't get the job, if you crash on your way to Nacogdoches, if you don't get the girlfriend, you are now identifying with the circumstances mm. instead of identifying with who he has made you to be and by who he is and by what he's done on the cross. Yeah. yeah. Because if you, by the prayers you pray, if they don't get answered, you are then, based on what you're praying, you are setting yourself up for failure to then identify with your circumstances. If you are only praying on circumstantial things versus praying, Lord, magnify your heart in my life, magnify magnify your voice in my life, magnify you, how you view people in my eyes, help me see people the way you see people. Yeah. All like, how, what are you saying to the earth right now? What are you saying to your church right now? What do you like? These are different prayers versus just in circumstantial prayers because of your focus mm -hmm. your focus needs to be on the heart of god versus the circumstances you are in i think at the topic of prayer has been one of the things i've been thinking about so much and i'm so glad you brought it up Come because I, I for years this was how i this is how I, I viewed prayer i didn't realize it until recently and i got some of this language recently but i used pr prayer was the ladder i used to try to grab a hold of the the promises of god right i would mm -hmm. build my prayer in an attempt to get a hold of the promise rather than laying the promise as the foundation and then building my prayer on top of the promise. I used my prayer as a means to, to grab the promise instead of understanding the promise of God's my foundation. It's not the thing I'm trying to get to. It's the thing I live from. Right. And I think when we, when we approach prayer, when we approach our, any aspect of our relationship with God, with that, I don't worship for love. I worship from love. I don't do these things for, you know, a pat on the back. I do it from the fact that God's already patting me on the back. I don't do it for affection. I do it from affection, right? It, it, it's, it's a complete shift in the game when you begin to look at it that way. Because here is the thing I found, and I preached on this. There's a whole sermon on YouTube. I think it's called Out of Order. I preached on it recently at YA. But many of us, the, biblically speaking, men are to be the initiator right? In a relationship, a, the woman is the responder, right? Men are to initiate, women are to respond. That's one bone I have to pick with a lot of guys out there is they are waiting for a woman to initiate with them. When biblically speaking, you're called to be the initiator, like you're called to be the wooer. The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, not he who is found by a wife is found by a good thing, right? Yeah. We get it out of order. But notice this, the Bible likens Jesus to a groom and us, the, 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 his body, as the bride. And it says this, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Jesus found us. We don't find him. Jesus initiates with us. And the problem is Jesus is the initiator. The proper sequence of events, Jesus initiates, the bride responds. Jesus initiates, the bride responds. We have, got, we have tried to step into his role and become the initiator with him. And that's why prayer is a means of initiation. God, if you're out there, I'm starting a conversation rather than allowing prayer to be your response to the God who is already beckoning, wooing, pursuing. I've been, I, even while you slept, he did not slumber. He was counting the hairs you have on your head. He was keeping your heart beating, your lungs pumping, right? Like that's where we're called to be. It's a response to the one who never takes a break, who never takes his eye off of us. I mean, our Bible reading is a, is a means of initiation. God, I'm trying to initiate. I'm trying to pursue you. Instead of going, God, you already wrote me a letter. I'm responding in reading it. <laughs> You initiated. This book was your idea. You wrote this down thousands of years, 1,400 years, 44 different authors, but one voice. It was all God. I'm responding. And we have, we have gotten it out of order. We have taken his role, and it's the reason our Christian lives suck. That's awesome. <clears throat> I was going to read one of mine. So one of my favorite verses um, or passages is uh, Acts 16, 25 through 24, um, when Paul and Silas were jailed. Because I think that is, it's the, my favorite representation of what a real, what prayer life actually looks like and what a life lived truly unto God and a heart 
what that actually looks like. So I'll start at uh, 25. <clears throat> and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were cl- were loosed. So I'm just going to I'm just going to read just those two but <clears throat> this idea that Paul and Silas were jailed and they're singing praises mm-hmm. to God that strikes me as two people that weren't going God get us out of here oh gosh this is terrible get us out get us mm-hmm. out get us out I find that as people that didn't even care about their circumstances they yeah. didn't even care about the situation and guess what then God lets them out mm-hmm. and it's like the, they didn't even change, nothing changed in their hearts or in their lives from being in the prison, being jailed, to getting out of the jail. Nothing changed in them. Yeah. They're the same person. They're, they weren't more uplifted when they got out yeah. because they already had what all they needed inside the jail cell. And, and then God just, well, we're going to free you. Bro, I got it. I, <clears throat> I just want to echo that because the scriptures just speak this over and over again. I preached this recently, literally like last week at our young adult service, preached a message on Jonah. I just called it running from God. And obviously, if you know the story of Jonah, he ends up in the belly of a great fish, right? He's in this deep, dark place. He doesn't realize it's ultimately what looked like his death would become his deliverance. Because while he's sitting in the belly of that fish, it's swimming to Nineveh, where he should have been the whole time. Um, But he's sitting down there and all of Jonah chapter two, it's only four chapters, but the entire book, but Jonah chapter two is Jonah's prayer. He's just sitting there praying in the belly of the fish. And it ends like this, but with, with the voice of thanksgiving or a voice of gratitude, I will sacrifice to you what I have vowed to pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Verse 10, and the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out on dry land. Notice the sequence. Verse nine, Jonah got grateful. Verse 10, Jonah got out. Jonah got grateful, then immediately Jonah gets out. And a lot of us were like, God, once you get me out, I'll get grateful. God, once you get me out of this, then I'll give, I'll give you some thanksgiving. And Jonah found the means to being able to get out of his situation the same way Paul and Silas did. And it wasn't even like they knew they were tapping into a cheat code. They didn't know they no. were tapping in the right buttons. But it's like, even they regardless, even to. <laughs> exactly, regardless of where this thing takes me, I am going to get grateful. I'm mm. going to be thankful God, look how far you've brought me. God, if this is where the whole thing ends, you're still going to get glory through my my demise. You're going to get glory through my death. You're going to get glory through however this thing goes, you will get the glory. Yeah. And then Jonah got grateful. That's Jonah awesome. got out. Paul, Paul and Silas got grateful and they got out. 